boss is the same as the old boss. You know, so it's, why are you criticizing Obama? But he ain't coming to help us. He's coming to help the man, you know. He's coming to help the man, the big boss man, the one who runs Wall Street. You know, he is there to keep us in oppression. And that, as I said, you know, some of the, I've had people jump up and want to fight because I said something. Like, what do you mean? How dare you say such a thing? Well, the truth is the truth. The truth is the light, as they say. And the reality is, if he is in office and has the ability to affect your condition to change the historical, some of the historical oppression, less than the load, if you will, and says nothing about you and you're his constituency, you're his, in fact, uh, strongest constituency, black folks put him in front in office and black folks reelected him. And he didn't give a damn thing about it. He tells black people, quit whining. Quit whining now. What are we whining about? Everybody else can get up and talk about their condition and what's happening to their communities, but not black people. We're not supposed to say a damn word. And we elected this, this guy. We elected him. And uh, he's a millionaire. He's, he's got his, he doesn't have to worry about what happens to him. You might be, you know, black people, the black community may be starving to death because of massive unemployment. Unemployment is higher in the United States or as high as the Great Depression, you know. And so we might we might be starving to death, the black community, with, you know, huge levels of unemployment. And the city I'm from is in fact the poorest city in the United States. And it's the, of the 200 poorest cities in the world, it's number 177. So, but even though people are poor, you know, the city might be poor, but everybody ain't suffer the same. Put it to you like that. Because of economic segregation, you have a situation where black people are starving to death, essentially. It's the poorest big city. And it's the poorest big city because of white supremacy, sustained economic apartheid, that's what we call it. Now, let me get to the Black Panther Party. The Black Panther Party grew out of and was a part of black power. Black power arose on the scene as a radical transformation of the civil rights movement. You might say, well, was the civil rights movement here and the black power was there? No, no, that's not what happened. Progressive stages of development, the organization changed, the movement changed over the course of these nine years I'm talking about. So that by the end of those nine years of, of, of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee's life, it merged with the Black Panther Party. And the Black Panther Party was a new group, and they had uh, drafted, is the word that was used, drafted the leaders of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee into the new Black Panther Party. And they did this because the Black Panther Party didn't have trained activists. SNCC had, people had been in the trenches for almost 10 years. They knew how to organize. And um, so he wanted, students, Huey P. Newton particularly, wanted to have the benefit of these activists. And he also wanted to unite these two particular organizations with parallel but similar histories in terms of radicalism. Actually, SNCC started armed self-defense even before the Black Panther Party existed. They started opposing white racists in the South with armed self-defense. And they started opposing racist coppers, if that's your term, <laughs> in you know, the South with armed self-defense. Uh, they even used the first representation of the leaping Black Panther. In fact, they called the organization in Lowndes County, Alabama, which was a one hell of a racist Hell ho, you know, the Klan ran that place. They called their movement the Black Panther Party. And in a short period of time, they removed the Ku Klux Klan. In fact, they destroyed the Ku Klux Klan. And, and blacks took over the government and the whole region. And of course, this was a, a notable achievement and this is what influenced, this is one of those things that influenced there had been other uh, 
instances of black people taking up arms, even during the civil rights period. People think, oh, it was just Dr. King giving speeches and turning and there was turning of the cheek and pacifism and this, that, and the other. And this is the story that the corporations continue to tell, especially the news uh, corporations. And of course, the government continues to say this, but it was not true. There was definitely an armed self-defense movement at the same time, just at the same time, as the pacifist wing. In fact, the armed movement 